Now, some of you know, I love a nice Lee Enfield, especially a number four. Right, the ever popular unboxing video. Don't you love it when an uninspiring white box arrives in the mail? What could possibly be inside? Well, on this occasion, something actually pretty damn exciting. Now, oh, okay, me and this brand, we haven't really gotten on. But uh, on this occasion, I thought this product, yeah, I was going to give it a go. What is it? Lee Enfield number 4T and L42A1 scope mount. So, we've opened up the box, we've found a plastic bag with some bits in it. What have we got? Don't need the box anymore where we're going. I like the bag. Hoping I like the contents. Got them all fingers and thumbs, you can tell when I've been at work. Here we go, so here's the mount itself. Got the thumb screws. They're called thumb screws, not because you uh, tighten them up onto people's thumbs. Well, maybe you do, I don't know, it could be fun. But uh, because, I don't know really, I guess you operate them with your thumb. Never really understood that. Oh, there we go. Thread, uh, hmm. That looks a bit smaller than the ones I've seen, the genuine ones. I've got some genuine ones. I'll do a comparison at some point and mention it in the description. But that kind of looks that looks metric rather than imperial to me. But anyway, the spring as well, that's not quite as beefy as the real deal. Um, yeah, that's far shorter. But hey... Yeah, I like the way that's been done, so as you can't lose it, it's great. Up front, same deal. Yeah, yeah same thread. Almost look bigger to start with, but yeah, same thread. So you've got this recessed hole here, the front one goes into. And then at the back it's flat, and that's for the pads, which we'll get onto in a minute. So, there we go. Not sure... And these are okay they're not sort of true to like uh, how can you put it historically accurate machine screws but they look all right you know they don't look too bad it looks pretty concentric it doesn't yeah that that looks pretty good got the correct little cut out there for the scope to actually locate into so yeah all right looking good so far very nice and strong and it's actually got the correct shape here a lot of the replica ones are just completely flat there whereas this actually has this thicker part there so yeah very good well done would have been nice to have seen something stamped on there some something you know even mock historic but plain sometimes is better than trying to fake history a lot of the genuine ones would actually have had numbers stamped in here and that was so as the top rings were always fitted to the correct part of the mount and the correct mount itself but you know you can't fake that sort of thing you can't make a stamp on a new part look old so it's better sometimes to just leave it plain what else have we got yeah, i like that what else have we got so ooh, we have another bag in the bag now this is where this mount at the price starts to win out over some of the other replica mounts because a lot of the other ones you have to pay about $70, and I say dollars because most of them are sold in America, more for the pads. And the pads is how you fit this bad boy to your gun. Don't go thinking that you can just buy this and whack it straight on. You need the pads. And I will then say, don't go buying the pads and then go thinking you can whack these straight onto your gun. Because it's not just a case of... Uh, drilling and tapping using a Hilker set or, you know, something you bought from Halfords. You've got to have some pretty, pretty major gunsmithing kit to do this sort of stuff. Um, I mean, like a mill, that sort of thing. The side of the receiver is hardened steel. And yeah, you're going to break some drill bits trying to drill that bad boy at home, I tell you. You need the right kit. You need a gunsmith to do it. That's all I'm going to say. Anyway, two pads. Yeah, I mean, they look right. Yeah, um, I did actually have a replica L42A1 at one point that Fulton's built for me. 
I make that sound very posh. Oh, Fulton's built it for me. Enough said. What else we got? Oh, okay. Screws. Yeah. Look. They're Phillips head. And some are... Why is some a different finish to the others? Um, okay. I think these are... Yeah, these are a bit less successful. Yeah. Looking at these... Uh, looking at... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'd suggest you source some of the proper screws. Now, there's a company in the UK. I'll pop the link to their eBay shop in the description who sells the screws. Uh, I think there's someone in America that does it as well. I'd suggest forking out and buying the proper screws looking at these because they don't... Yeah, I... Yeah, they're... I don't think they're going to cut it. So, next, pads have a very specific shape, the back of them, to fit onto the gun. So we will just try. I mean, this is such an obvious thing, but let's, let's just try it anyway. Let's make sure, oh yeah, there we go. See how secure that actually locks on. Okay. Yeah, I've got to tighten it up a bit. There we go. There's still a bit of play in that. Yeah, that's for, that's as tight up as you can go by hand, and that's the thing with thumb screws. You can only go hand tight with them. And yeah, there's a bit of play there. There really is. So it's not really good. Going in a long way. Um, I think this goes back to these springs. As I said, they're not they're not the right springs, and I mean, you can see that one's actually come off at an angle. Let's just try undoing it. I mean, obviously, in a combat situation, you wouldn't be wanting to try and mess like this. There we go. No. No. That's yeah. That's. Not ideal. Hold on. Hold on. Wind it all the way through. Hmm. Yeah, I think you're going to need to source the correct springs as well. Yeah, that's that's really not not working for me. Sorry, I know I'm potentially boring the bejesus out of you, but this is important. This is the difference between a scope that stays on your gun and stays accurate and a scope that, I mean, look, yeah, it's off on an angle. Okay, well, that is something that would require a bit of fettling, I'd say. I mean, nothing ever works first time, yeah. As soon as you just tighten it up, it starts pulling off. Yeah, there's not a lot of thread going in there. Okay, well, I think that's something we're going to have to revisit. Or, what I, I'm going to try. Just try without the spring, just to see. Again, going off on an angle. Good old cooker going off in the background there. Right, okay, well, that's something that I think would require a bit of fine tuning. I'm not really sure what's exactly going on there. Almost almost as if it's too big, actually, for the cutout. Yeah, it's not bottoming out, that's for sure. I think it needs a file taking to it. Just a bit of material shaving off. The coating's coming off already, but you kind of expect that. Speaking of this coating, I'm trying to work out if it's phosphate, parkerizing, what it is, really. Oh, God, you're all thinking, who is this guy? God, what a... he's boring. Yeah, I know. 
I'm boring. What can I say? Anyway, that's not what we all came here for. This is what we came here for. Lee Enfield, number four. Now this one, much like Terence and Philip, is Canadian. There we go. Okay, well, that's interesting. Just trying to compare, really. There we go. Just clears that web there. So if that's on there, as it should be, the second pad goes back here. Oops, I dropped that. Like so. Now this is something to bear in mind about the rear pad. There's no thread in the rear pad. So not only do you have to drill and tap the receiver for these little screws, you have to drill and tap the receiver. I'm calling this the receiver action, whatever you want to call it. You have to drill and tap that for this big thread on the, on the thumb screw as well. Now, yeah, it's a bit of a pain. The other thing you've got to do is when you've drilled through and tapped through and everything, You've then got to bear in mind the bolt passes up and down through that bit here. So yeah, there's a bit of fine tuning, a bit of fettling required to clean up that area afterwards. Where is it? It's here, isn't it? Something like that. And the other thing to bear in mind is that the rear lug on the bolt there. Yeah, there we go. Getting lovely and greasy. There we go. Beautiful. There locates into that area there. So this whole area is reinforced as I said. The um, steel is heat treated. I can't remember if the whole thing is heat treated or if it's just this area. But anyway it's bloody hard there. So yeah, I'll point actually in shot this time. There we go. Oh it's got a nice, nice noise. Anyway, bloody hard there. Drilling and tapping is a right kerfuffle. Kerfuffle, I'm so English. I mean, you know, dimensionally, as I say, the pads look okay. Oops. Yeah. There we go. So it would be about there, because that would be... At least the front one's logical where it goes, right up at the front. And then that one goes about there. There we go. And you end up with... Allegedly, a Lee Enfield number 4T, which I have to say at the moment is looking a bit low and not straight. <laughs> I'm really not doing a very good job of advertising this product. And that's because I'm not sponsored. So, yeah. Okay, well, what I'm going to do is... I'm actually going to make a copy of the receiver in resin. And then, just the receiver by the way. Obviously not going to build a full size gun in plastic, that would be just silly. Then, I'm going to drill and tap that for these mounts. And fit it all up. And then we can see whether it's going to sit in the right place, whether it's going to be parallel over the bore whether it's going to be even straight, or whether it's going to be whee, aim for the floor, or whoo, shoot for the sky. We'll find out. Find out together, because we all like learning. And if we're not learning, well, we all like playing with guns, don't we? Yeah, there we go. Number 4T scope mount. I mean, for a replica, something like that. For the moment, from what I can see, yeah, pretty damn good, good price. Airsoft, that sort of thing. Kitting out a deact. Yep, not bad. For a live firing gun, let's withhold judgment. Yeah, and let's find out how it fits. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs>